Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to tackle how to do box beams production style. And by production style, I mean beams that have dropped sides, giving you a nice reveal. These are a really fast and efficient method to build beams uh, that you'll find you're asked to do often when trimming new homes. So hope you enjoy the video and we'll dig right into it. These beams are gonna be stain grade and there's a little trick I like to do to keep things tight. And that is to put a bevel on my bottom pieces as you'll see here. I start off by taking my three boards that will be on the horizontal plane and ripping about a 15 degree bevel on the side. I don't take it all the way through and I'll show you that in a minute. But that's what I'm doing here. You can see new construction job sites aren't always ideal. I had to open a window in order to get a nice long lane to rip these down. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Every time I show my table saw outfeed, I get asked questions about it. It is a Russo outfeed table. And I have a video on my YouTube channel. It's called DeWalt Table Saw Mods, I believe. You can check that out if you want to see more about how I outfitted my table saw like this. Now at this point, you can see my bottom board has this taper. This is a one by six that I ripped with a taper. I can go ahead and set these aside now. I won't need those until it's time for install and cutting to length. An additional step that I feel is really important uh, is softening the edges of millwork. So here I'm prepping all the side beams by giving a uh, oh, probably about an eighth inch radius roundover bit on the bottom of both edges of these beams. It'll make it finish off a lot better. And I've got about five of these DeWalt cordless routers and I think they're about the best thing since sliced bread. Absolutely love using these things. If you haven't done this before, this might not make sense right now, but it'll make sense later in the video. That bevel helps that bottom piece um, get a lot tighter when you're installing it and it also helps in the assembly process as you slip it into place. So you'll see in a little bit why I do that. Right now I'm marking a line on my side beam pieces and then I'm gonna nail a cleat onto the inside of those pieces and that's gonna give me the perfect reveal as I insert that bottom horizontal board into place. So here I'm using my double square with about an inch offset and that'll give me the three quarter thickness for my board plus a quarter inch reveal. Now there are a lot of ways to skin this cat as far as scribing these side beams to the ceiling, but my preferred method, especially on stain grade work, is to use my Hawk marking knife and actually cut painter's tape to get my scribe line. It'll make sense in a little bit, but right here I'm just prepping every one of the side beams with a one inch piece of painter tape along the top edge. And that's gonna give me something that I can cut into and scribe to in a little bit. It's important to always batch your processes, meaning to do everything at once, if possible. It's more efficient that way. So like on my bottom pieces, I ripped all those on the table saw at once. Now my side beams, I'm prepping all at once. Uh, I also sanded all of these all at once. So it's a little bit boring on the front end of the job, but it's more efficient to do it that way. I do apologize in the video, you're going to see me jumping forward and backward a little bit in the process. I am a one man installer and video production crew, so it's a little bit hard to get all these shots uh, in the right order sometimes. A lot of times drywallers leave ridges of drywall mud that need to be scraped and cleaned off um, prior to beam install or else it'll kind of mess you up. So that's what I'm doing here. Now this part of the process is really crucial. The cuts on the ends of these beams are not gonna be perfectly square. They're not gonna be perfectly plumb almost all of the time. The reason for that is the drywall buildup. So how are you gonna get those cuts to match accurately whenever you have to get this beam cut to the perfect length and you don't have a second chance on trimming these things? The answer is to use a torpedo level. At least that's the answer that I've found. So you're going to use your torpedo level and you're going to get it plumb and you're going to see how much of a gap there is there and that's going to tell you how you need to adjust your cut on the end of these beams to make it fit perfectly. 
So let's just say here I put my torpedo level up here and it's an eighth of an inch canted inward on the top. Then I can note that on my cut list and whenever I cut this beam, I'll cut it square and then I'll mark an eighth of an inch over off of the top and cut it at an angle, then it'll fit perfectly. I really can't emphasize enough how important this skill is to learn because you'll also use it on beams on cathedral ceilings and uh, situations like that. A torpedo level is extremely important and being able to gauge cuts using a torpedo is a torpedo level is a really important skill to have. So after I've marked my angles that I'll have to cut on the ends of these beams, you'll see me using my laser tape here. This is my trusty laser tape, the Laika Disto D2. It's extremely accurate to the 32nd. I trust it a lot and I use it constantly. As a one man band, you could never get an accurate measurement with just a tape, standard steel tape measure in a situation like this. Uh, the laser tape is the only way to go. And if you're new to the channel, I always uh, note the most common tools that I use in the notes below the video. And I have an Amazon store with this stuff listed. You can find all this stuff there. You just saw me mark a square line using my triangle square. And now I'm marking the offset on this end cut. So say I needed to come an eighth inch in on the top. I just marked that eighth of an inch. Now I'm marking the angle that I need to cut this thing at. One of my absolute favorite tools for beam work is the Festool HKC55. Yes, it is a little bit underpowered, but it's so handy to be able to grab a circular saw and cut a perfectly straight line. I use it all the time for beams. Now, whenever you install these beams in place, this is a trick that will really help. Put a back bevel on the back side of one of your cuts, the end that you're going to slide into place. Don't start the cut until you're about an inch up. Uh, that way you don't see the back bevel, but this will really help slide the beam into place. You'll see it in a little bit if it doesn't make sense right now. Again, here's the process, cutting it to length. I'm marking it on the bottom with my total length. I'm gonna use my HKC to cut it off square. This cut, I believe, was actually just a square cut, so pretty simple. And then I use the jigsaw with the Collins coping foot to put that back bevel on it. And again, pay attention. I don't take that back bevel all the way through. You don't want to see that back bevel on the very bottom of the cut. You just want to take it through uh, most of the way on the top and that's going to help it slide into place. Now it's time to temporarily tack these beams up in place. That way I can scribe them, take them back down, cut to my scribe line, and then reinstall them permanently. Whenever you're doing beam work, you always work in pairs, meaning you have to have both sides of the beam up in place whenever you scribe that. The reason is you need them to be level. Uh, whether this is cathedral side beams, a cathedral ridge beam, or beams on a flat ceiling like this, you want to put them up together, then you use your torpedo level to make sure they're level, and then scribe. Otherwise, if you don't do that and you scribe one, and then it happened to have a bump in the drywall that made it sit lower than the other beam, and you scribe the same amount off of both beams, you'll go and install them and they won't be level and it'll look terrible. So it's really important, always work in pairs. I'm gonna put both pieces up as you'll see, and then I'm gonna get out my torpedo level and I'm gonna make sure they're both sitting level. Oftentimes they aren't, so I'll have to adjust the ends uh, on one of the beams down a little bit to make so that they're level. Same thing for the center. You also want to do the same thing in the center. Try and get it, it as level as possible also. Since I work alone, I always start in the center of the beam and tack up the center first. That's because it's a lot easier to hold the beam up if you're standing in the center of it versus on the end. So after I tack it with one screw in the center, I'll move to the ends of the beams and get those level. Use your torpedo level to get the end of the beam level and then make sure you put a screw in both sides. That way it doesn't move. 
Here you can see on this one, I had to use my little flat bar to pry down one side to get it level. Not a big deal, but this is a really, really crucial step in the process. If you fail to do this step, you'll get all done and you'll have a whomper jawed and that looks terrible. Don't ask me how I know, I've forgot this step before. Now I need to cut in my scribe line. Normally I use a hawk marking knife, but this is a little um, scribing tool that comes in really handy. I believe it's called a razor scribe, but it's got a cutting blade on there and you can offset it for different thicknesses, but you just run it along the ceiling and uh, that blade cuts the tape and it'll give you a really precise line to cut your scribe to. Now you can see as I pull off the top half of the tape, this is gonna give me a really sharp with line with a high contrast. It's gonna be really easy to see uh, what I need to cut to to get a really, really tight fit. The disadvantage of using a pencil to scribe is the pencil line is just not as precise and crisp and um, sometimes some wood grains hide the pencil line, dark wood will hide the pencil line. So whenever it counts, using tape and some kind of a cutting scribe is my go-to method. And just to show you another method on a different beam, this is what it would look like using a hawk marking knife. Uh, a hawk marking knife is a lot more versatile in my opinion, but you need an offset block to go with it, whereas with the razor scribe, the offset is built into the tool. With the hawk marking knife, um, you just gotta have a block of wood around uh, to use. So that's what I'm doing here. See, I've got my big hawk marking knife and the offset block, and that works really well also. Now it's time to take the beams down and scribe them. So you should have three screws in each beam, one in the middle and one on both ends. I start by taking out the screws on both ends and then I put myself under the middle. That way it's easy to hold and support and I'll take out that center screw and uh, take them back to the sawhorses. So now the next great question, um, how shall we cut our scribe line? There's a lot of different ways to do this, so I'm gonna try and highlight a few different methods. That way you can add all of these methods to your bag of tricks. First thing uh, I'm gonna do, first, first method I'm gonna show you is on the table saw. You wanna tilt your blade over to about 15 degrees or so, and then you're just gonna freehand the cut along this scribe line. Now, if you're good, you can just literally run the edge of your blade right along that tape line. Um, if you're a little bit less comfortable, you can still make the cut, but leave it about a 16th of an inch proud of the tape line, and then sneak up to the tape with a block plane, and that goes really quick also. I should add that here I'm cutting proud, if I remember right. Uh, because on a, on a board this long, it's very unwieldy. It's a lot harder to keep control of. If this board was only three foot long, I could cut right to that tape line, no problem. But to play it safe here, I'm going a little bit proud. That way I can sneak up on it with the block plane. I do try and keep my job site set up as lean as possible, but a good outfeed table is essential for safety. Um, I'll link this table in the notes below. I get a lot of questions about it. It's a great outfeed table. As you can see here, my bevel cut on the table saw, I left just a little bit proud and I'm just finishing this off with the low angle block plane to get nice and tight to that tape line. Another method you can use in place of the table saw method I just showed you is to use a track saw. I'm not nearly as big a fan as of the track saw, um, not as much power, uh, it's more tools, you gotta have the track out and all that jazz. Um, and then if you have a really uh, bad ceiling with a lot of humps and dips, the track saw is not ideal because you're trying to cut a straight line. 
probably my personal favorite and most used method on scribing is to just use my block plane in conjunction with a good old fashioned handheld cordless circular saw. The cordless circular saw will follow the humps and the dips in the ceiling a lot better than say the track saw or the table saw and it's just really convenient. You can just grab a, a cheap circular saw and go. Um, definitely the most lean approach in my opinion. Just be advised that with using the circular saw, you will get your nice New Balance shoes filled with sawdust and have sawdust between your toes for the rest of the day. But that's just part of being a carpenter. After you get your scribe line cut on these side beams, it's time to flip them over, over and nail a nailer strip onto the insides of those beams. That's gonna give you something to push that bottom uh, horizontal flat part of the beam up against and keep your reveals perfect. If I know I'm gonna be doing beams on a job and I have scrap materials that I'm ripping off of other aspects of the job, I try and save them for, for this purpose. Um, that way I'm not wasting additional material on this. If you want to use glue to nail this piece on, you can. It's really not necessary. Um, I do a lot of times just because I'm OCD, uh, but it's probably not necessary. The one thing you do want to make sure that you do is use the correct length of nail. Typically I use inch and a half nails in my 18 gauge nailer, but you've gotta make sure you switch those out to inch and a quarter nails whenever you're nailing these three quarter by three quarter pieces on. Otherwise, you'll flip the board over and find that you've got a bunch of nails sticking out. Don't ask me how I know that either. Finally, the moment of truth. Time to nail these bad boys home. That's pretty simple. You're just going to push the board as hard as you can into the ceiling and nail it off. You can use 2 inch, 2.5 inch, inch nails, whatever you want here. I am using subfloor adhesive PL Premium uh, on my nailer strip. Uh, just to really beef up this beam. You don't always have to do that, but uh, it'll make it really solid if you do. And then you can see that that taper on that bottom board really comes in handy when you're pushing that into place. It makes it go up in there a whole lot easier. And just use some clamps to help squeeze things nice and tight whenever you're nailing it off. That way it's airtight and uh, you're good to go. That's a tight scribe right there. Now the reason I leave the tape on until after the beam is installed is because theoretically in the event that I might have screwed up and had a gap, I could still caulk that with some white caulk, pull it really tight, and then pull the tape off and the caulk would not interfere with the stain work later on. Since I'm using three different video cameras, I'm a little bit out of order here, but I want to back up a little bit and talk about that flat center board and cutting that to length. So you're gonna use your laser tape to get that length. You wanna be careful that you do not cut that piece too long. The reason is you've already got your side beams installed and you've got a really nice tight fit there. But now whenever you go to install the center beam, if it's too long, it's gonna push the drywall in and it's gonna create a gap. So very important, try and get this center piece um, the perfect length or even just maybe like a 30 second under that way it does not push that drywall apart and create a gap for your side beams now whenever you're cutting this center beam um, to length you want to make your square cuts but then you also want to tilt your saw over at a bevel and again put about a 15 degree bevel cut on that and that's going to help you to slide that piece into place without gouging drywall or creating friction that's going to push things apart. You'll notice on that bevel cut, I did not take it all the way to a point. I kept the cut flat for about between an eighth and a quarter inch and then start your 15 degree cut. And that goes for the entire way around this board. And that's going to make so that Number one, it's really easy to install, and number two, it's super tight the whole way around this beam whenever it's finished.
so as you can see here everything looks really nice and tight and beautiful and pretty reveals are spot on but sometimes we make mistakes so I'm going to show you how to fix this mistake because my cut was off on this one so the way to fix this is to create a wedge or a stave shim and to do that we're going to take a piece of matching wood material scrap which in this case is maple I'm going to put my table saw in about a five degree bevel something like that rip one edge and then you want to move your table saw fence over and then flip the board over so that whenever you rip it again that rip offcut piece comes to a point so you're going to have a sharp point on the front and between a 16th and an eighth inch on the back side this trick was taught to me by my buddy brian uh, on instagram great canadian carpenter uh, this was just this trick just absolutely blew my mind the first time I saw it and I use it all the time now. So we're essentially just going to use this stave shim to fill in this gap. And uh, so you just put some glue on it, shove it in there, cut it off. And, um, you know, you can whenever you're on the floor, you can't tell that the cut isn't perfect. Um, and that ugly gap goes bye bye. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Your support is much appreciated. If you found the video helpful, you can visit my Amazon store, hit the like subscribe button, or purchase tools through the links listed in the notes below or in the top comment in the comments section. Really appreciate it guys. We'll see you on the next video.